Hey there. Um, so this is new for me. I've never done a video like this before. Um, but I'm going to give it a shot. But bear with me in case this turns out to be, you know, awful and stuff. But call me Transapient, by the way. And um, let you a little secret about myself. I love dinosaurs. Always have, probably always will. And um, anyone else who probably has, you know, a deep love and respect for these animals as they naturally were, should know that for the last few decades, um, we've known that they were very bird-like, you know, like many of them had feathers, etc., etc., you know. Um, so that's probably why lots of these um, people, you know, um, would um, uh, be highly critical of um, media releases that do not portray dinosaurs as scientifically accurate as um, we know they were. A prime example being like the Jurassic Park series, at least that's of course one of the first ones that should pop into the, my head and others' heads, you know. Um, I mean, I remember it happened with Jurassic World, you know, they were always complaining how, you know, the raptors didn't have, like, any feathers, or even t the T-Rex, probably like that, you know. Um, they're probably, of course, gonna do it with the the sequel and, um, and uh, any other, you know, movie that consistently portrays dinosaurs as, you know, more lizard-like or reptilian and stuff. And um, that is why I have been wanting to make a video like this for a while. Not because I'm going to be complaining about those movies, because I think that those arguments are pointless and misdirected. And here's why. Number one, they're pointless because, well, um, plain and simple, the directors and the people who uh, actually make those movies, they're just straight up not going to listen. Alright? Just just get over that and secondly it's misdirected because these movies and, and stuff like that they're not meant to be informative they are entertainment pieces they have uh, like uh, they were designed and conceptualized and completely made uh, to be um, completely um, uh, based around entertainment and the dinosaurs therefore are simply used in ways to you know um, Propel the story to make them like uh, if they need to be scary or whatever They'll be more lizard like or whatever hell you know even in the context of the movie universe itself for like like Jurassic Park for instance like um, like in the third one that everybody for some reason hates but I personally love um, like uh, I forget the actor's name, but um, Dr. Grant, he's, I think he summed it up perfectly when he said that the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park are, and always have been, always intended to be genetically engineered theme park monsters. But, um, so that is why I think that um, critiques uh, in, um, you know, dinosaur movies and in, in mainstream entertainment and stuff are just not all that valid, you know, because they're movies. But, here's, and here's the reason why I made this video, and dear lord, it took me like four minutes to get to it. I told you this was going to be awful. But, I think the true target of cr heavy criticism and critique when it comes to the inaccurate portrayal of dinosaurs should be this right here children's books that's right children's books because these these are meant to be educational they are supposed to be like you know they they should have you know done research and be as up to date as possible to present you know, dinosaurs or other prehistoric life forms in an informative way for, you know, like kids or, you know, uh, young pe people who generally want to know uh, something about them, you know? And that's something that I don't think I've hardly heard anyone really talking about, which is why uh, it's, I was so interested in making something like this. I mean, uh, then again, who knows, probably everyone's done it before and I'm just, you know, 
late to the bandwagon because I have absolutely no sense of situational awareness. But that won't be the first time. Anyway, I um, have noticed that, that um, there are still the vast majority of children's books, like for example, in like Barnes and Nobles and bookstores and Books a Million, it just any kind of bookstore really. I'm a huge bookstore nut, but I've noticed that they, uh, the majority of these books are still um, having inaccurate information about dinosaurs, even ones that are very recent that should know better, you know? And that's why I'm making this here video right here. I want to do a kind of a review, kind of a demonstration to show you why some of these books, they are a travesty towards being a truly informative and um, up-to-date, you know, resources for little kids, which they are supposed to be, but more often than not, utterly fail on. So, here's, here's it right here. Dinosaurs. Prehistoric life as you have never seen it before. Ooh, bargain price. Anyway. It's a cool cover, I guess, but let's just see about this here. Yeah, I don't have a good feeling about this already. Anyway, because I don't see any colors. Oh, we'll see. Hey, I know the ad artist. Well, not personally or by name, but I've seen that kind of work before. And now, hold up, let's see when this was made. Let's published in 2017. Do you see that right there? This is a 2017 book. We have known for close to like, I don't know what, and was um, Sinoceropteryx discovered in 1991. So let's see, 2001, 11, 20. So coming up on 30 years, we have known that dinosaurs had feathers. Many of them did and stuff like that. But let's just see. If these are truly are not like anything we've seen before, oh my lord. And you can just see right away, these uh, are not very, you know, up to date. You know, like, we know that, um, that lots of plesiosaurs and stuff had like these, um, you know, fins on their back and whatever. And, but wait a minute, I don't think plesiosaurs had teeth. I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm pretty sure they didn't know that. And oh my lord, is that a Therizinosaur? I couldn't tell because it doesn't have feathers. Or wait a minute, is that supposed to be feathers right there? That little tuft there? Oh my goodness, this, this has turned out to be worse than I thought. Uh, T-Rex, we know that T-Rex should have at least some covering of feathers based on cladistics and phylogenetics with its close relatives that um, were totally feathered, such as Uteranus and whatnot, but I'm not seeing that. Uh, let's see it. Oh my lord. Look at this. Well, this is Compsognathus? What are these? They, these really are like like straight out of, you know, like the Jurassic Park series. That Oh my gosh, like not that I'm like criticizing the movies that's not the point of this video but the, the these books are to blame for or you know perpetuating these super scaly lizardy looking things scopsognathus should um to my knowledge look pretty much like sinoceropteryx and oh my gosh now this this is downright inexcusable this is yes i know you belong in the movies you do not belong in this book. And wait a minute. What? Oh my gosh, I just realized. They are attacking a stegosaurus that apparently this stegosaurus must have wandered into a space-time anomaly. Uh, like what they have in Primeval, that show Primeval, you know, like from, from England or whatever. But that's the only way I can explain this stegosaurus in... Late Cretaceous, Mongolia. My goodness. See, and oh, oh, now you got feathers, but what, what the heck is with this, this hand here? Dinosaurs didn't hold their hands like this. They were like, 
they held them like birds. They, this, they were pronated to the side. Like, I can't really do it right because I would break my wrist because their wrists weren't structured like ours. But it wasn't like this at all. And uh, I don't know what's going on with his butt here, but I don't know. And, and wait a minute. Who who did the modeling on these things? Because, look, did you even reference? Did you even see? I mean, you could see for yourself, yourself the... Um, the actual fossils of the overwrapped eggs, they were more oval like. What, what the heck is that this? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, I don't know, the face is kind of weak too. So many scales, and I don't know about the quill like things. I don't know. The sauropods, I guess, look relatively okay since we know for a fact, at least, that not a lot of them had. Or they, they, there's no evidence for feathers on them. But wait a minute, what the heck is with these things on Diplodocus's back? I mean, I get that there, there's um, plenty of speculation about what kind of you know ornamentation sauropods may have had, but this makes it look almost like it has a bunch of plates on its back. I don't know. Oh my lord. Like again, who did these models for these things and stuff? I don't know. My gosh, this looks like something from a video game or something. Or not a good video game, like a bad, bad CGI model like thing. Like I've seen like dis like um like Discovery Channel documentaries and stuff like that that um had just absolutely awful CGI. You know, I, I mean. Uh, that that's another thing that people should be more critical of because those are also supposed to be educational but they are oftentimes to totally have very inaccurate models and whatnot you know but let's look at this ah scutellosaurus one of my underappreciated little guys <laughs> what's with what's with Minmi's face what happened to him I don't, I, what, what, again, who made the models, the, whoever, whoever made the models, like, no, no, they were not cold-blooded creatures, well, actually, they weren't quite warm-blooded either, you see, fun fact, dinosaurs were actually kind of mesotherms, they were kind of, most of them were kind of between cold and warm-blooded, they, they maintained a core body temperature, but, it was able to fluctuate sometimes, and they were able to, you know, elevate it or lower it whenever they kind of needed to. So, that was kind of cool, you know, but these two, look, the Eliosaurus, the Luscosaurus, uh-uh, no, no, because we have known since 2014, with the discovery of Calendodromius, that feathers are ancestral to both Sauristicans and Ornithicans dinosaurs. So these these guys, these small-bodied little Ornithicans, they most likely should have big, luxurious plumage across their bodies. Most most particularly Lealiosaurus, because he lived in Antarctica. I mean, it wasn't as cold as now, but dear lord, it was still damn cold. Hi, Triceratops. You're looking like a big rubber toy. I don't know. Lord have mercy. <laughs> oh, the microcer... Wait a minute. No. No, 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 no. Micro it's microceratus now because turns out microceratops is like the name of some fly or something I heard. Microceratops is no longer the valid name of this dinosaur. At least I'm pretty sure on that. I'm pretty sure it's microceratus. He looks miserable for it. I know. I'd be in a bad mood too if people were constantly mispronouncing my name. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is horrifying! Like, these are like dinosaurids or whatever. Uh, or like the reptilians that people think are controlling our society. What is this? Leptoceratops? The hell? How is this a... Oh, well, I know. No, 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 no. Skyji Moloch, at least from what I've heard, is no longer a valid species. It's a teenage Pachycephalosaurus. Dear Lord, this is this is what I'm talking about. See, 2017. Remember that? 
What the heck? This, see, whoever slapped this encyclopedia together did absolutely no research, no basic searching to just see if, whether or not their models were accurate or their presentations were <sighs> Again, yeah. Yeah, bird-like, or at least it's supposed to be bird-like. I don't know. Because we know that all ornithomimosaurs were completely feathered, had big feathers across its arms, and on the tail. The heck is with this? <laughs> Look at that, it looks like a flamingo, kinda. Oh well. And, what the heck, wait a minute. Drinker, the small bipedal herbivore. Yep, those are the teeth of an herbivore, all right. Jeez. I know I've, I've, I've been saying that the models, like the 3D models made by these are awful, like, a lot of the time, but my lord, it just is. This is something that I just noticed right away. I'm kind of an inspiring artist myself. I'm, wait a minute, what's this? Camtosaur? What? Wait a minute. No. What? No. No. No, no, no. No! What the hell is with... What's with their hands? These are hadrosaurs. They, th their hands, as far as I, I, if I recall correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong with this, but their hands were basically like fused together kind of in like this pad. You know, I I don't know what is up with this. I'm like, oh my god, oh my, what is this thing? The stance, the basic anatomy of it. Oh my lord, did they even like look up the basic crest? I mean, it's not a. This isn't something that should be difficult. We live in an age where almost all of the information acquired by our species over the centuries can be accessed by people's, you know, mobile devices with just, you know, their fingertips and yet hardly in the so-called information agent. And no one, even, even the most amateur um, guys who probably don't even do, like, you know, paleo art professionally should be able to look up things that to, to um make a quasi accurate or presentable model you know and like, oh i'm sorry there's little announcement being made i'm in the bookstore by the way in case that wasn't obvious well, what's we got here? This is a Dimorphodon, eh? I'm just gonna let this sink in for a minute. Look at the skin. Look at those shrimpy stick arms. I mean, I'm not one to talk or anything, but Look, and I don't think the, I'm pretty sure the patagium is supposed to be like between the feet and the tail is free and stuff like that, pointed wingtips? What the? We have known that pterosaurs had pycnofibers, basically kind of fur, for longer than we've known dinosaurs had feathers. They were buff. They were, this is, this is straight out like the 1800s. What the heck? Oh. Oh, you're trying to be up to date by featuring like one pathetic example of the, the Cauditerics. Well, not my lord. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is almost so bad, it's funny. Look at those spaghetti arms. Oh my gosh, this is like some sort of octopoid alien from another planet that has convergently evolved to be quasi reminiscent of like these dinosaur bird thing but um archaeoterics basically we know what color it was or at least i believe i know what color it was it was um like kind of a grayish kind of tones i believe and uh, 
This is just pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. My lord. The, the, this, as much as the dinosaurs, you know, are inaccurate, the pterosaurs are just sad. I was like, oh. Oh, this is the most accurate dinosaur in here so far. And let, let me see. It hardly even calls it a dinosaur, anyway. My lord in heaven. Ah, so you see this? This this is what I was talking about. See? Yeah. It was as I've never seen it before. I've never seen it portrayed so bad before. This book has no excuse for being as inaccurate as it was. This was made, again, in freaking 2017. And and it's not a movie where it can claim, well, oh, it's just, you know, oh, to be an entertaining story, you know, and just have cool creatures and stuff, because I'm actually all for, like, scaly dinosaurs or whatever in movies, as long as the purpose is, you know, as I've said again, entertainment. But if the publication uh, in any media is meant to be educational, there should be a concise effort made to have, you know, for accuracy and in that in, in that sense this book this book just absolutely fails man even aesthetically speaking and I've said that scaly dinosaurs can be kind of cool like as their own creatures and stuff but even these are just just bad they're ugly man kind of you know I mean whoever did like who who did this like I wonder if I could, like, find out who the, the credit was. Like, all photos and other images are coming or something. Stock, 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 stock. Wait. So, I think, see, lots of times, encyclopedias like this, they just reuse, like, other images just over and over and over again. Or they just get stock images and stuff. I mean, I get that it's cheaper and stuff, but you're sacrificing what you should be. An accurate, informative piece of literature to help inform, you know, aspiring young children, you know, who want to get into dinosaurs and you're feeding them. This is feeding them false information. My lord. I don't mean to like, uh, didn't expect to put this book down so much, but my lord, I just cannot help it. So anyway, that's the first video I've ever made that I intend to share on uh, media and stuff so uh, let me know um, how I did and I told you it was probably gonna be crap otherwise you know but yes I would uh, I would absolutely not recommend this book now that's not to say that all books like this like this because I have seen and I know that there are good um, bo dinosaur books for, ch for kids out there that really do have you know accurate dinosaur models and are fun and cool and stuff but this this ain't one of them so again cool cover art but it's all a lie so you've never seen them before yeah seen them in the like 1800s before so um i guess that's it and i'll See you later. That's just one Transabian's opinion. And in case I do happen to make other videos, you know, I'll try to be like make them um, about like other books and stuff like that, and maybe about other stuff. But we'll just we'll see. We'll just see, I guess. So see ya, and have a nice day.